Hi and welcome back to Classic MGB. Now today we're back at Bewley. Why? Because it's a celebration of 100 years of the MG brand and there's some lovely MGs about. So let's not waste time and take a look. <laughs> Now, as regular viewers of the channel will know, I'm a bit of a sucker for a GT and they don't come much better than this one. So this car's a 1968 GT. It's named the Chameleon by the MG Owners Club Workshop. It came off the line in Abingdon in mineral blue. It's had various color changes throughout the years, including burgundy, old English white, black, as you can see. And during the pandemic, it was restored by the MG Owners Club Workshop. So as of 2023, the current owners own this car for 49 years, and I can see why he'd never sell it. Now, one of the beauties of MG ownership and MGB in particular is you don't have to have a concourse car. Concourse cars can cost a great deal of money, but I found different cars that are in different states of repair possibly being restored. So it's quite a cheap, efficient way of getting into classic car ownership. Now, this wouldn't be an MG event without Neil Brandt. Neil is a committee member of the MGB Register and he's brought his GT. So I thought I'd better ask him. Neil, tell me about your car. Yeah, certainly, Graham. So it's a 1969 GT. It came off the production line on St. Valentine's Day and was delivered from there to a workshop on the South Coast where it was converted for police use. But as you can see here, it's been extensively Re restored it's now in midnight blue um, which i think is its fourth color so it went from white to black to british racing green finally midnight blue as you can see here so it was restored by tim kelly down in cornwall uh, who did an amazing job with the paint and the coal round it had extensive restoration it was a real rotted car so um, lower wings sills replaced kind of brought up to what you'd kind of expect factory specification at that stage but from there, it went into ownership with uh, an engineer who worked at that time with the Lotus Formula One team. And being an engineer and somebody into performance engineering, he was really into his upgrades. And so a lot of what you see on the car now is of his making before I purchased it. So it's got a lot of frontline equipment on it, the frontline front suspension, rear five link suspension. Then also an Aselli stage two engine, so a 1950cc engine in it. Um, so a lot of upgrades, um, which make it a very drivable car on the modern day roads. It's an absolute delight and joy to drive. And I've kept doing the upgrades. So it's got a, a five speed Mazda gearbox in it, power assisted steering. Although I have that generally wound right down because you generally don't need it. Good cooling on it. So an alloy radiator and um, really uprated front brakes. So you can't help noticing the Aselli on the rocker cover. So it must go quite well, Neil. How does it, how does it perform? It performs exceptionally well. It's very much capable of modern traffic speeds. Uh, you can get it out onto the carriageway, you can cruise or whatever speed you choose to legally. Um, and yeah, in terms of horsepower at the rear axle, um, probably about 20% higher than when these cars came off the production line. So pretty decent going. Um, and it's just got that intoxicating engine note at about two and a half thousand RPM above where it really starts to rumble and it's and it's you just can't help yourself but to drive it sort of there and above. Now most people know that in 1975 the MGB was modified to comply with the American legislations and the main thing of course was the rubber or so-called rubber bumpers but the other thing that's very noticeable between these two cars here's a, a late model MGB Roadster and an early model is the difference in ride height this yellow one is a good probably inch and a half two inches higher than the original on my left in the red now, if you're at Bewley, it's definitely worth taking a look at the world of Top Gear. And in fact, this is one of the very vehicles that Richard Hammond managed to sink in one of the episodes. And if you're interested in what Richard Hammond has to say about MGBs, take a look at the description. And there's a link there to one of our videos where we had a chat to him at Castle Coombe Racing Circuit. 
Now here's a really interesting MGB. It's not one I've seen before. So looking at it, it says Sir Edward Wheeler on the side. The driver's Bernard Clark, and it's been prepared by Neville Bernard of Auto Developments in Cranlock. But what's really interesting about it is this hard top. It's a kind of hard top I've not seen before, but it's got these glass tinted panels in it. So if anybody watching the channel can shed any light on it, please drop it in the comments. Today, Bewley is full of 423 MGs, from MGBs, MGCs, V8s, and some of the older stuff, but I couldn't resist taking a look at this thing. It's a ZT in a marvelous shade of mauve, and even the wheels are mauve. This one is one of the last MGBs made. It was manufactured in 1980 and actually not registered till February 1981. It's number 11 of the final thousand. Only 420 of those final thousand were roadsters as well, and only 212 had the stag type wheels that this one has. It's been extensively renovated between 2010 and 2013. It's had sandblasting, resealing of the underside, and it's had a fast road engine in 2012. It's got a leather interior instead of the factory orange and brown striped deck chair cloth, as well as a non-standard wood steering wheel. The odometer actually shows the car's correct mileage. Now, one of the things I thoroughly recommend to any MGB owner is to join an owner's club. Now, that can either be the car club or it could be the MG owner's club. In fact, this is our club, the Wessex MG owner's club, which is quite active and we've got a good presence here. Now, before I sign off this little bit, I ought to give a big thanks to my camera crew. It's Holly, my daughter. Give us a big wave, Holly. So I'd just like to thank her massively for all the help she does on the channel. And just out of interest, she has her own channel. Details on the screen. This isn't a B, it's a C, and I reckon it's probably the cleanest car here today at Bewley, and it is in beautiful condition. Just take a look at this. The interior is just as clean, and those wire wheels look so, so clean. I wonder how long it took the owner to clean them. Now, even though the channel is called Classic MGB, it's lovely to look at these old M-types produced between 1929 and 1932, nearly 100 years ago. But of course, MG hasn't finished. It's still going. Look at this. This is the MG4. Now, MG, as you know, is Chinese owned. But for me, I think it's great that so many brands have just disappeared. MG has stayed and they're still innovating. Now, there's one or two cars for sale today, and one of them is this red MGC, owned by Keith. Keith, tell me a bit about the car. Well, we've had it for 16 years, done uh, 9,000 miles in that time, uh, bought it clean and kept it clean, you know, and uh, it's just a lovely motor car, got a nice sunroof, so you still get the benefit of open air driving, all round, pretty good car. Sure, and uh, what sort of money are you looking for? We're looking for about 22 and a half which when I you know, look around is uh, reasonably cheap. I found another contender for the cleanest car of the show. It's Paul's. Paul, tell me about your car. Um, so this is a 19, built 71, registered 72 MGB. It is quite clean. I spend probably half the time cleaning inside here and then the rest of the time cleaning the outside. And then of course, once a year with the toothbrush, taking each wheel off, scrubbing them spoke by spoke, which is always a bit of a labor of love. But when you get it done, yeah, you know, you see the end result. I guess from your accent, you're not from the UK. No. Is there any story about MGBs? Why have you bought one? Yeah, so I'm Australian. And uh, when I was at university, a friend of mine, his dad used to restore them and we'd drive them with the top down. And it was just, you know, just beautiful memories. Yeah. Uh, and so quite recently I thought, well, I'll try and relive those. And, um, and they're such an iconic car in this country. Very, very easy to maintain, beautiful to drive. And ev everyone you meet has got a story about it. My uncle had one, my grandfather had yeah. one. Yeah. I've got one in the barn or something like yeah. that. So yeah, they're a lot of fun. And mechanically, it looks just about perfect. Yes, yeah, so I recently had the MGB, uh, the MG Owners Club did a bumper to bumper inspection. Um, and it's a great job that they do up there with the inspection, but they, they said they had to find something. So they said the, uh, the handbrake cable is a little stretched. So I could drive away quite, quite easily and, and do, go on another rally knowing that I haven't got too much to worry about. So, and that was it, yeah. just a handbrake a cable. Handbrake cable. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah, so I was very pleased that at least, you know, they're the experts in these, so it was great feedback. 
So that's it, MG100 at Bewley and lots and lots of lovely MGBs. Now, if you've enjoyed the video, if you could give it a like, that would be great. Hit the button to subscribe and the bell to get notified when we upload new content. As always, thanks for watching and take care. <laughs>